that's how they feel that they are actually contributing and giving something back to, to the society. Every Rotarian's needs are different. And if we don't know what their needs are, then how are we going to fulfill them? Right after someone gets in Rotary, you have to start fostering the opportunity for them to take a leadership role, whether they choose to or whether the club chooses them to. You know, leader is a role model of everybody. If you've got the heart, you're going to take your club forward in some fashion. And, and that's what it's really all about, all of us working together. Teaching, leading, and then transferring the responsibility of what we are doing to them. The rewards are huge. The satisfaction's enormous. You know, I'm very proud to be a Rotarian. Good evening, everyone. Hi. Uh, to all our district officers of our district and our and other district and zones, visiting Rotarians, Rotaractors, Interactors, and friends of Rotary from all over the world. Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon. Thank you so much for spending your time with us as we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the United Nations on how Rotary helped establish the United Nations. Later in this meeting, we will hear from our keynote speaker from Rotary International District 7080, past district governor and Rotary United Nations representative, Doug Vincent, which will be formally introduced in a short while. To formally begin our meeting, may I call on our club president, Mr. Josala Simulanka, to call the meeting to order. All right, good evening. Good evening, guests and fellow Rotarians from all over the world. As president of the Rotary Club of Vanilla Metro, I will now declare the 18th regular meeting for the Rotary year 2020-2021 in order. I will now turn over the proceedings to VP and Secretary-elect Chesa Palace. Thank you so much, President Josalo. To lead us with the invocation, may I call on our club pres past president, Shauna Sehas, to be followed by the Canadian National Anthem, Philippine National Anthem, and the Rotary Hymn. Shall be my cherished goal With a four-way test of 
point in time, may I call on our club past president, Lito Aquino, to lead the four-way test. Thank you, Vice President Chesa. Fellow Rotarians, let us recite the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Please unmute your gadget. And all together now, is it the truth? It's the truth. Is, is that true? Yeah. Is it fair to all concerned? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you very much. Thank you so much, P.P. Lito. And now to formally introduce our visiting Rotarians and guests. To be followed by the formal introduction of our keynote speaker, may I now call on our secretary and president nominee, Eman Hernandez. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dignitaries, fellow Rotarians, Rotaractors, Interactors, Rotary alumni and friends of Rotary, guests. Welcome to the Banilad Metro Rotary Club of District 3860 in Cebu, Philippines. It is my honor to recognize first and foremost Rotary International Hello. District 3860 District Governor Rodel Rizel Reyes. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening, Gov. And our keynote speaker, past District Governor and Rotary United Nations Representative Douglas Vincent, who will be recognized formally later on. Good evening. Or good morning on your end. Paul you now, Zone Coordinator, Past District Governor, Mary Ann Solomon, Zone 10A. Good evening to all. Good evening, Gov Rizel. Good evening. Gov. Past District Governor, Benjamin Garcia, District 3860. Good evening, everyone. Um, Past District Governor Judith Dement of District 1090 of the United Kingdom. Good morning. Or afternoon, is it? <laughs> All right, let's proceed. District Governor elect Anna Luisa Bumagat of District 3860. Good evening, Gov. District Governor elect Dale Hoy of District 9800 in Australia. District Governor-Elect Angelita Sunio of District 3820. Good evening. Good evening, Gov. And evening. District, District Governor nominee and District Rotary Foundation Chair, Lilo Alinio of District 3860. Good evening, Gov. May I also recognize we have a lot of people in this Zoom call. So allow me this uh, indulgence to summarize all our greetings for our Rotarians, Interactors, Rotaractors, and guests. District and Zone Officers of District 3860 and beyond, good evening everyone. Assistant Governors, Transforming Presidents and Secretaries, Club Officers from our District 3860 and beyond. We also want to welcome our Rotary alumni, dear and beloved guests from the Philippines, Canada, the United States, U.S. Virgin Islands, United Kingdom, Ethiopia, Mongolia, Lebanon, Turkey, and so many other nations, truly a representation of the United Nations. And a special mention also to our own past president from the Rotary Club of Banilad Metro, who's residing in Canada now, Past President Grace Balanki. Thank you very much. And I apologize if I missed anyone in attendance. Thank you so much for have, for coming and good evening. Good 
Back to you, um, Secretary Elect Chesa. Thank you so much, Secretary and President nominee Elman Hernandez. Good evening to everyone. Um, all right. Uh, Secretary and President nominee Elman, may we again ask you to formally introduce our keynote speaker for tonight. Thank you for that volleyball. <laughs> all, right. all right. It is my honor indeed to introduce to you our guest speaker, our keynote speaker for tonight, or in his case, in the morning. Dog is a charter member of Woodstock Oxford Rotary in Ontario, Canada, and a third generation graduate of his family's successful farm equipment business. He is now an international advisor on harmony and communications in family business corporations. He served as a federal RCMP police advisor member of the Ontario Police Review Committee and the United Way Allocations Committee. Dog is an honorary general in the Philippine National Police, recognizing his role promoting global understanding and world peace. Dog's introduction to Rotary came as a GSE team member to Australia in 1977, and he was a team leader to the Philippines in 1995. He travels the world on Rotary assignments, has served six years on the Council of Legislation and is a Zone 24 UNAC Rotary United Nations representative. He is involved in Rotary Foundation at all levels as a benefactor, major donor, and multiple Paul Harris Fellow. He has received several leadership awards including Rotary International President Citation, Avenues of Service, Service Citation, Rotary International's prestigious Service Above Self Award and the Rotary Foundation Citation for Meritorious Service. He is also recognized as a distinguished Canadian with a Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Medal. Through his glo global Rotary activities, Dog's contribution is well known and he's often called Rotary's Roving Ambassador. He is a professional speaker, prolific writer, founding co-chair of the Global Rotary Peace Community Program and past Rotary Foundation cadre advisor. In the words of past Rotary International President Frank Devlin, Doug Vincent is a soft-spoken Canadian who can see the things that need to be done. Then he has the ability to create awareness and take the necessary action. He is an ex excellent example for us all to follow. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Rotarians and guests, interactors and Rotaractors and friends of Rotary, Rotary United Nations Representative, Zone 24, past District Governor of District 7080, Douglas W. Vincent. A round of virtual applause, everyone. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Emmanuel, for that wonderful introduction. And it's just so great to be with everyone here and to see a lot of smiling faces that I recognize as friends uh, during my travels uh, all around the world, including the Philippines. Uh, thank you so much for coming and sharing in this celebration of Rotary's founding contribution to the United Nations. I want to give special uh, appreciation to uh, uh, the Rotary International Network and the Dean of the Rotary United Nations and ambassadors from around the world, uh, Judith, she is the person who leads the uh, Rotary International Network, where we have RI representatives at all of the uh, major NGOs around the world. So great to, that Judith can join us today. So um, many of you may be aware that uh, Rotary was involved uh, with 49 Rotarians at the charter meeting of the UN, but you may not know uh, the deeper background and the roots that you can be so proud of having at the United Nations because as Rotarians, there's no other organization that you can have such pride in being a member of, being associated at the very start of the United Nations, being associated with a global uh, health initiative, the largest health initiative of polio to eradicate that dreaded disease, to be associated with uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation who are helping fund us in our polio initiative. So take a great sense of pride in being a Rotarian 
not only for the great work that you do in your local communities, but for the uh, work we're doing globally around the world. So today we're going to focus on uh, the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. Uh, what was Rotary's uh, start in all of this? How were we involved? And uh, how do we continue to be involved? So um, Emmanuel, if you would uh, start my PowerPoint, please, and we'll share this with you. Today I want to share how you as an ordinary Rotarian can do extraordinary things through the leverage and power of Rotary, because you are the power of one. Almost every program we see in Rotary today was started by a Rotarian in a Rotary club who planted the seeds which grew into ideas and Rotary initiatives for projects all around the world. I believe Rotary is not an A-shaped pyramid structure like we see in the business world. I think that Rotary is an inverted pyramid. It's an upside down organization with each member of every Rotary Club at the top of our organization, followed by the club president and directors of the club, then the governor and leaders within the district. Then at the very bottom, we have our supporting Rotary International staff Rotary President with the Board of Directors and Foundation Trustees. It is you as a Rotarian who is at the top of this organization. All of these programs you see here were started by Rotarians who planted seeds in their local Rotary Clubs. I don't have time to go into each of them in detail today, but we're going to focus mainly on Rotary's founding contribution to development of the United Nations. Back in 1945, it was 49 Rotarians who participated at the United Nations Charter Meeting in San Francisco. Many of us know this part of the history, but several don't understand the reason why Rotary got invited to these meetings to begin with. That was started by a single Rotarian in Nashville, Tennessee, where they held the first International Institute of Understanding in July 1934. He had the idea of promoting international institutes of understanding and these events spread to over 2,000 locations around the world where many country statesmen, presidents and senior government dignitaries came to know Rotary from this initiative of promoting international understanding and world peace. So when U.S. President Roosevelt and UK's Winston Churchill had the idea to develop a United Nations, they said, we need to have Rotary there because they are already doing a lot of what we hope the UN might accomplish in the future. So that, my friends, is why we are at the meeting table contributing to the UN building process. But Rotarians did much more than attend those sessions. Well before, the call went out around the Rotary world to give their input as to what we thought might be good points for upcoming meetings. In fact, there was a conference at a location called Dumbarton Oaks, which resulted in this document on the left being published, which contained the input and ideas that came forward from around the world. Then, after the San Francisco meeting, where the charter document was written, and by the way, the first draft of the UN Charter was written by a Rotarian in South Africa. Rotary was distributing a document called From Here On. The Charter was shown on the right side of the pages and on the left were the comments made by Rotarians regarding each paragraph of the Charter. So this document helped promote and educate Rotarians around the world to encourage them to understand the UN Charter and get engaged promoting the purpose of the UN within Rotary. When you walk the hallways of the United Nations, and by the way, you have official status at the UN, the senior leaders consider us as having a partnership arrangement with them. They see us as leading NGO, and they are impressed by our action of how we create traction to make things happen. And largely because of our polio initiative, they say, we need to listen to you. You've already arranged a ceasefire for a day 
to go in and inoculate children against polio. You already arranged a weekend ceasefire in a conflict area. So please help us arrange a ceasefire for a week. Please help us arrange a ceasefire for a month. Then please help us arrange a ceasefire for a year because you've proven that you know how to get that job done. Leaders at the United Nations also ask us to do these things. They hope that we can continue to create public awareness about global issues. They hope we can strengthen and scale up our already successful programs through our Rotary Foundation. They hope that we can build more capacity in our focus area of literacy and education because those of us in international development know that it is literacy and education that acts as a pathway from poverty for many destitute people. They also hope that we can continue with our exchange programs to promote tolerance and respect around the world. Lastly, and most importantly, they hope we can demand accountability from each of our governments and service providers around the world because too many times state leaders come out of summit meetings or other United Nations sessions and they say what they think the TV cameras want to hear. But in terms of their pledges and action steps, they go home and take little action. In fact, currently most countries aren't even coming to half of what they dedicated themselves to in the area of international service and development. So we all need to hold our governments more accountable. When you think of it, the first draft of the UN Charter was written by a Rotarian and the Sustainable Development Goals have also had input from Rotary. So the Rotary areas of focus are very similar to the UN Sustainable Goals. We both have the same goals in mind and are on the same track to accomplish the same things to make the world a better place. So how can we do this through Rotary? Well, as a Rotary International level, we are trying to build better, more solid relationships with these UN affiliates around the world. We are trying to be more than the sum of our parts by joining together and working on projects together in harmony. What you might do locally is get engaged at the local level to support the UN. One of the popular opportunities is the MUNA, the Model United Nations Assemblies, where we have debates at high school, college, and university levels where students are assigned countries in teams. And by the way, they often come to the debates wearing the cultural dress of the countries they represent. At these events, they discuss the current issues on the floor of the UN General Assembly. There is an organization called WFUNA as well, which is the World Federation of United Nations Association, an umbrella over country associations. In my case, I'm affiliated with the Canada UN Association, but they also have them in several other countries with chapters in most major cities. You can also support the UN through your Rotary Foundation projects to help reach the Sustainable Development Goals. Or take the opportunity to network with local affiliates by looking up a chapter in your city. They would be more than excited to have Rotarians join their group and often they have monthly or bi-monthly meetings to promote the United Nations SDGs. Of course, we want to continue our exchange programs uh, subject to COVID restrictions and do whatever we can to promote and hold our governments to be more accountable for keeping pledges toward international development. You have a Rotary toolbox. We have scholarships that send people around the world every year, the World Peace Scholarship and the Ambassadorial Scholarship. We have our Rotary Foundation programs that I don't have time to go into right now. We have our Rotary Network of Members where we have 1.2 million friends all around the world to share information with. People can get to know each other through our exchange programs, of course, 
still subject to COVID. And we have United Nations Rotary Friends Facebook group. Of course, we have our matching global grants. So let's take a look at how our grants can help on projects around the world. If I was with you in person, I would do a live magic show on stage right now. But because I'm not able to be there, I'm going to share a short video with you showing you how simple it is to do a global grant. You will see a lady come on stage and donate $5 from her club. I take her $5 and turn it into two $5 bills equaling $10. Then a gentleman will donate $10 to the Rotary Foundation. In fact, he made an investment in helping make a difference. I take his $10 and through my magic Rotary Foundation printing press, I print a $20 bill from his 10 to show the magic of our matching grants. So please enjoy this little show. Do I have anybody in the audience who would be willing to donate uh, or contribute $5 to the Rotary Foundation? Okay, ma'am, come on up with your $5. While she's coming up, do I have anybody who would invest $10 in the foundation? Understanding, of course, sometimes investments do carry an element of risk. Okay, we got a fellow here. Okay, come on up, sir, with your money. And um, I'm just going to show you very quickly how simple it is to do a foundation matching grant. Okay, so we've got $5. Your club, ma'am? Dearborn Heights. Dearborn Heights. Thank you so much. So the Dearborn Heights Club want to do a project, and they've got $5. And what are they going to do, assuming they've got the paperwork all done, they've got the partner, what is the thing that they want to do? What are they going to, what's the first step once they've got the paperwork done? Submit it to the district for DDF match if, if the district has budget to do that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the $5. Okay, you want to just hold that? <coughs> now, for those of us who go on the road, we have special magic grant uh, tricks, okay? <laughs> so we got an empty bag here. And we're going to put that money in the bag, send it off to your district. Your district fairly uh, prompt in responding oh, to yeah. the grant request, okay? So let's see what they responded. Ah, what have you got? Two five. So is that a good return on our investment so far? <laughs> so that's all. That's all for you. It's all for you. Okay. Okay. Just put it in the bag there. <laughs> Okay, so we've got now $5 from the club, $5 from the DDF budget in their district, which is $10. Okay, now this is one that I bet you none of our, even our Rotary Foundation people have that just came from Evanston. But uh, those of you who are allowed into the basement in the Evanston office know that we've got a big printing press there that prints all the money for the grants. <laughs> And, and so when we go out and do projects, they just give us these little printing presses so that we can do the grants right on the spot. You have one of these, right, Steph? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take $10, okay? We're going to send that to Rotary Foundation in Evanston. We're going to ask them to match our grant, right? So tell the folks what you might have there. Is that a good return on your investment? Yes, it is. My friends, where can you put money into your favorite charity and get a 400% return on your investment? So that just shows you the great return on the investment that you get through our Rotary Foundation. And my friends, we do need your support to our Rotary Foundation because after all, that is the financial engine that drives all of our humanitarian projects around the world. We do great things in Rotary, but it takes donations from Rotarians, club projects, and friends and colleagues to make the wheels go around and to get that traction I talked about earlier. So my friends, you are the power of one. I hope that I've shown you some quick examples of how you can truly make a difference in our troubled world 
with the United Nations. Through the ideas and the projects that you share with your fellow members and the great work of your Rotary Clubs, you can surely do extraordinary things to make a difference, shining a light of hope into those dark corners of despair for many of those destitute people you may never know. Thank you so much for your attention and please do celebrate Rotary and our United Nations partnership in our 75 years of service to humanity. Thank you so much, past District Governor Doug, for sharing with us the power of one and how Rotary can still take part of from here on moving forward. I'm, and I'm sure a lot of us here has questions for you. So without further ado, may I call on again, Secretary and President nominee Eman Hernandez to be our moderator for the question and answer portion. All right, thank you so much, uh, Secretary-elect Chesa. All right, let's go on with the open forum. For any questions that you have for past District Governor Doug, you may place them in the group chat, i uh, sorry, the chat box, or you could raise your hand so we can properly acknowledge you and you can ask your questions live. And I'm sure uh, PDG Doug is ready for this and I already have someone waiting to ask it, burning to ask his question. May I call on past president, Ricky Ballesteros. Good morning and good evening, uh, past district governor Doug. And of course, Grace, President Grace. Here's my question. Uh, what are the collaborations between the UN and Rotary when it comes to COVID-19 response? And how can we more uh, actively participate? Uh, Ricky and others, well, actually, Rotary uh, Foundation have been very active in the COVID response. I would say that our work has been more with uh, WHO than, than United Nations directly. But um, our, main, uh, our main role, and, and as I said at the start of my presentation, Rotary is an inverted pyramid, and it's the Rotarians who are at the top. And uh, so a lot of our work is being done with... Uh, the Rotary Clubs who are doing uh, COVID relief projects and district grants and some Rotary Foundation grants. And uh, there's been a lot done, as you know, in the Philippines, building quarantine sites, building extra facilities at hospitals with portable hospital beds to handle the people. And then um, at the global level, Rotary International has pivoted our uh, polio uh, resources we have seven research laboratories around the world that normally are used to track polio. And uh, uh, over the past year, they've been used to help track COVID, do research for, for COVID. And uh, we have a lot of staff and resources, for example, satellite phones, uh, which have been redeployed to assist uh, with the global COVID effort. So uh, globally, Rotary has done a lot. I would say uh, the last figures I heard, we've put uh, likely over $25 million into uh, projects to support the COVID efforts. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, past president Ricky from our very own club, Banilad Metro. So once again, the invitation is open if you want to ask your questions live, please. There's a function on Zoom, you can raise your hand and we can acknowledge you properly so you can ask your question. Or if you're a little shy, you can message, uh, direct message me on the chat box or post your, your question there. Uh, I have a question here. Uh, could you talk more about the model United Nations for the youth? And could this be a Rotary initiated project? Actually, uh, yes, the model UN uh, program is, uh, it's kind of like a debating uh, event where they simulate the General Assembly discussions at the United Nations. Uh, it could happen in a high school, a college, and maybe some universities. And actually, um, 
you already have this very active in the Philippines and in other parts of the world where Rotarians are sponsoring these events. And as I said, um, topics are assigned to uh, the students in small groups. Each uh, group represents a country. So they come to the session. And in fact, some of them even wear the, the native costumes of the countries they're representing. And it's quite entertaining. But they debate and discuss the current issues on the floor of the United Nations. And um, then at the end, they have the resolutions. And it's, it's a very uh, good way to inform the students about current world affairs, to get them challenged in a fun way, an engaging way to do the research. And then, of course, their debating skills and their speaking skills are also a byproduct advantage. And actually, uh, I've got a really interesting story on, on this right from the Philippines where I happen to be visiting. And uh, I recall um, uh, a couple of Rotarians invited me. And at the end of the session, they had a big envelope of the resolutions that the students had passed that day. And they asked me if I would be able to take these or send these to the United Nations, which would add more meaning to the students in the process. So I said, most certainly. So I brought the big brown envelope home addressed to the UN. And um, I thought, you know, if I ship it there, it will just go on somebody's desk and gather dust. I will wait until I go to my next meeting at the UN and uh, deliver it in person. So, uh, Within two or three months, I was at a meeting and um, actually uh, the United Nations has a policy that they do not like to receive gifts uh, because they don't want to be uh, showing favoritism one country over the other. But the, uh, the event coordinator said, there's no reason you can't go up and present it uh, at the coffee break or at lunchtime. And, uh, so that day, the undersecretary was there, of, uh, the secretary general, the RI president was there. So I had a friend with my camera. We went up to the front and I uh, arranged to present it to them. And so the uh, RI president and, uh, and the uh, United Nations secretary general's representative was there. So my friend is going to take the picture. And the photographer of the UN, the official photographer, came along and said, do you want me to help you with this photo? And I would suggest that you turn around so that the General Assembly Hall is showing above your shoulders and then it'll show the environment. And uh, she said, I'll take the photos. So she took the photos and uh, about 14 days later, the photo of me presenting the students' resolutions uh, at the United Nations actually was the featured photo on the UN uh, website. And so I sent that uh, link to the UN website, of course, to the, to the uh, school and the Rotarians. And they were just so thrilled that their, their brown envelope of resolutions actually got to the top officials at the United Nations. So that's a little bonus story for you. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that heartwarming story. That, pretty, uh, that great elaboration as well on the on how the youth really gets into it and you know how that little <laughs> I'm lost for words there. We have a question from Secretary Elect Chesa Pales for PDG Dog. Is there a way to have the local United Nations affiliate be a closer partner of our club or district? Yes, absolutely. And and uh, they would just love to be involved uh, with Rotarians. And now um, I haven't had a lot to do with the um, the Philippines affiliate because I'm basically a representative from United Nations Association of Canada. But um, if you go on to, uh, I think it's unap.org is the website if I'm not mistaken, but and reach out to them. Uh, the, our goals and our objectives of making the world a better place are identical. Uh, why wouldn't they be? Because a Rotarian from South Africa helped write the, the charter of the UN. So uh, reach out to them. Uh, most of the associations have either monthly or bi-monthly meetings. Of course, with COVID, that is a shifting uh, a thing, but reach out to them. I know that uh, I've been working with another uh, district on a, a celebration event, and uh, they got the message that 
uh, everyone there was working from home and the communications have been kind of slow. So uh, be patient uh, and it may be a bit of a lag because of COVID, but uh, the United Nations associations around the world, uh, that's their purpose is to engage local people. So by all means, reach out to them, get involved. Uh, they do have chapters in most major cities so I wouldn't be surprised if there's even a local chapter in Cebu that you could get connected with. Oh, so uh, I'm sure Secretary-elect Chesa is going to contact the nearest one, probably here in Cebu. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> All right. So I just want to reach out again to everyone. This is a perfect opportunity to ask about Rotary in general or the United Nations, especially its 75th anniversary. If you want to ask your questions live you may raise your hand raise it now or you can ask the question in the chat box be it anonymously or i could acknowledge you so no worries so i do have a question i which uh, chicken egg question just to stir up the pot um which came first the sustainable development goals or the areas of focus <laughs> i kind of got i have an idea but maybe pdg dog could could surprise me well, um, I don't want to get into a competition here, but you know that we've had versions of our area of focus for quite some time. As uh, uh, some dedicated Rotarians will know, we've just added our seventh area of focus recently, which I think becomes official July 1, which is the environment. Um, so we've had our areas of focus and, and we've had our future vision of Rotary Foundation ongoing. The sustainable development goals uh, were recently developed, uh, I believe, two years ago. And actually, uh, Rotary was involved uh, in, in uh, giving input for those. And, and in fact, I was in involved in some of the meetings where they were developed. Prior to that, we had uh, five goals over the past several years. So um, there was a version of, of UN goals uh, prior to the sustainable development goals. Uh, I think there was five, if I remember correctly, but uh, when we develop the sustainable development goals, they're not meant for every country to reach every goal. Uh, part of the problem in the previous set of goals was that uh, some countries being on a different playing field, some countries had different types of problems because of the situations in their regions of the world. And it was not meant to be a competition between countries because they're all at different places on the spectrum. They're, they're all at different uh, wave levels, so to speak. So the idea of, of having the 15, the 17 development goals was to provide a smorgasbord or a buffet of goals that countries could select from, which ones more aptly apply in their circumstances. And then they are to work on self-improvement over time, not compete with other neighboring countries. And uh, so that is the reason why there were more goals established to address the needs of countries around the world who are in different situations. All right, thank you so much, PDG Doug. So definitely <laughs> gonna keep that in mind and no competition between the two great organizations. Uh, Secretary-elect Chessa, I think um, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Let's give past District Governor Doug Vincent a round of applause and thank you so much for answering all these questions. We are very grateful. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thank you so you. much, Secretary-elect Eman Hernandez. And thank you also for uh, to our past district governor, Doug Vincent, for opening ideas and opportunities on how Rotary on our end can take part with the United Nations and for giving us the inspiration for future collaborations to make the world a better place. And I'm sure a lot of us here are inspired after tonight's event. And uh, with that, as a form of appreciation, our club would like to give a certificate of appreciation. And um, for that, I'd like to call on our club president-elect, Christine Chua, to do the honor. Good evening, thank you very much, VP Secretary-elect Chesa. You did an amazing hosting this evening. 
And I would like to congratulate our Rotary Club of Vanilla Metros, great team for conducting this international event. And with that, we would like to thank our wonderful speaker this evening and present this certificate of appreciation to past district governor Rot Rot and Rotary United Nation representative, Doug Vincent of Rotary International District 7080 for giving us your valuable time and sharing your experience with us as a keynote speaker that imparted insights, lessons, and experiences to expand our reach so that we can grow our capacity to make an impact as a power of action. We inspire and offer endless opportunities to Rotary to create lasting change in ourselves and in our communities. Given this 13th day of April, 2021, Cebu City, Philippines, signed President Josela Simafranca and Secretary Emmanuel Hernandez. Congrats. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Back to you, Secretary elect Chesa. Thank you so much, President elect Christine Shua. And thank you once again uh, for your time, President uh, Past District Governor Doug Vincent. All right, at this point in time, may we proceed with our uh, president we time. So may I call on our club president, Gonzalo Simafranca, for the president's time. Thank you, VP and Secretary elect Chesa. And uh, my greetings to. District Governor Reese and uh, PDG Mary Ann Solomon, DGE Anna Bumagat, DGN Lilo Alinu, and all our guests. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, PDG Dog Vincent, for speaking to us and giving your valuable time. It's just so great to know that we have a significant part of history because we are part of Rotary. It is indeed so encouraging and so inspiring to know the role of Rotary, not only in the establishment of the United Nations, but continuously working with the UN with many projects. So at this time, I just would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you, for everyone or all our guests here, uh, for you to know more about our club and the things that we are doing this pandemic year and the things we plan to do. We are Rotary Club of Banilad Metro, and we meet every other Tuesdays okay. at 8 p.m. Okay. And so, <clears throat> our first, uh, we had this during the pandemic. This is one of our first projects. Uh, that's the five loaves and two fish. And so that project was, you know, by faith that we can multiply the loaves and fish, which Actually, we did because we were able to get a lot of sponsors and we were able to help those people crying, literally crying in Facebook. So that's one of our projects. Next. Um, another project we had was the Sea Cucumber Alternative Livelihood. What actually, what's unique about this is because of the pandemic, there was so many displacement of work. Uh, we have a community who was asking us to support them by buying flashlights. So we did, we helped them buy flashlights so they can hunt for sea cucumbers. But the good thing about that, it's, it's not only, it didn't, didn't end there. It's just a start. Later on, I'll, I'll show you what happened after. Then we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, yeah, this, these are wave, uh, wave one and wave two. This is actually an online concert. So we never had idea that this can actually happen. And because we have some artists in the club and who offer their you know, talent and uh, we made it happen and we're able to raise uh, a good amount of money so we can support our projects. Next. And we, of course, we took the opportunity to uh, do a lot of webinars. And, and these are some of the webinars we had. We had webinars on uh, how to deal with anxiety and uh, stress. We have a, a webinar to deal with grief therapy. And we also have a webinar uh, with a person from the OST to help us with, you know, how to work with them. 
Yeah, so we we did the rice support to the farmers of uh, coconut farmers. So we did help them provide them some rice. And what's the next slide? The next slide is our typhoon response for the three typhoons, especially the typhoon Ulysses. Yeah. And then what's the next after that? Uh, okay. So the next. It's kind of lagging. Yeah. Kinda okay. Lagging. No worries. Chris. Uh, the next slide is uh, our uh, school's new normal for uh, Barili, Aluginsan, Sibonga, Tagbilaran, and Punta Princesa, Cebu City. Protective yeah. gear and educational materials. Yeah, and printing uh, materials. All right. And then let's go to the next, please. We can finish this quick. Sure. Uh, the feeding program at Punta Princesa Night High School. All right. That's good. And we can proceed to the next. Um, this is the the next slide is the sac, uh, livelihood program, C Cucumber. So um, the extension of the next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so this is a very good uh, project also because we started with the flashlights. Now from it's, it's just an alternative livelihood project at first, but now they're becoming uh, their, their, their livelihood right now. So there's a community in Dan Bantayan, so about 15 of them. We started a, a small group there. Uh, hopefully in the future will become a Rotary Community Corps. And uh, from there, we can replicate it. We can do the same how we did it there. We can do it in another town. Let's go next. Um, this, this is the slide with the site visit by you and uh, Miss Stella in right. Dan Bantayan with the sea cucumbers on the lower right. Yeah. We can go to the next. Okay. Uh, the turnover of nets and other materials press. Yeah, that's the materials for the cage. So right now from, from just hunting, we, we are now creating a cage so they can culture the sea cucumbers so in you know there are typhoons so when there are typhoons they cannot go out to fish or don't go out to hunt but because of the cage at least it's they, they can still do or make money all right let's go to the next please our district uh, our cooperation with district activities the mangrove planting and cleanup and the blood uh, letting or blood collection. Yeah, that's for the, uh, our participation in the district activities. That's good. And then let's go to the, I think it's the last, right? Yes, our future <coughs> project express. Oh yeah, we have our future project. So I'd like us to know that this is our plan for the next maybe few days, next few weeks. Okay, one is we will be, you know, uh, helping, organizing, uh, sponsoring a sports tournament. So that's in, actually right now, uh, many students are in their house and the problem with computers is like, it's, there's a problem with their communication with their parents. So for us to be able to support that, that can actually provide opportunity for relationships to grow within the family. So we will talk more about that. Also we have vanilla tree, tree planting and we are also planning a rhetorical com uh, competition and of course, the expansion of the sea cucumber uh, project and replication. And very exciting because we have the new Interact Club, which is the Cebu City National Science High School, is going to come very soon. It's going to finalize very soon. All right. Next. Uh, last two slides, Press. Uh, vision for the Nations. All right. Yeah. So before I end my president's time, I'd like to inspire everyone here tonight with a vision. Okay. It's a great honor and pride that we are part of this organization that has a great vision, not just a vision for their generation at that time, but also for the next and the next after that. And in fact, millions or billions of people right now are benefited because of that vision of unity. So, and we carry that same vision as our obligation. So I want to inspire us with this text. I got this text from a document, okay? Written 750 BC. So it's an old document. A very old document. It's about a man who was shown with a vision. 
on how unity or what is truly united nations to look like. Okay, it says here, the wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with a bear. Their young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den. And the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. Actually, I took this from Isaiah. And this is a very powerful vision. And this vision can happen. What the mind can conceive, the body can achieve, right? And the concept of this unity goes beyond the colors of our skin. The wolf and the lamb don't have the same skin. Of course, we know that. But they can live together. The concept of unity goes beyond culture. The calf and the lion definitely, obviously, have different culture. They have different culture in eating and hunting. The lion can eat the calf. This concept of unity goes beyond economy. It goes beyond our personalities. It goes beyond any religion. This vision comes from God, and he wants us to know that it can happen. And it is happening already to some extent. And this can happen with more and more people and more and more nations in our time today. And it's going to be an amazing sight to witness this vision come to reality. And to do this requires a lot of love and a lot of work and, of course, a lot of sacrifice. And I'm glad that we are doing this from our different clubs. And thousands of people felt so blessed because of our ingenuity, our passion, and, of course, our love and sacrifices. So I want to encourage everyone, all the visiting Rotarians, let's continue to shine and give, to continue to give, to support, to serve mankind above ourselves. Be the power of one as PBG Dog Vincent encouraged us to become. And one day we will see this vision to happen in our time and in our eyes. Good evening. Thank you so much, President Jocelyn Simafranca, and also to Secretary Eman for assisting on sharing RC Banilad Metro's ongoing and future projects and for the inspiration on the vision for the nation. I can see PDG Dog is interested to visit the Cucumber Project soon. Uh, PDG Dog, you are very much welcome to visit when the situation is better. Uh, just let us know, all right? So time check, it's already 9.09 in the evening. It's, um, we thank everyone for gracing as your presence tonight, most especially to all the district officers of our district and other district and zone, visiting Rotarians, Rotaractors, Interactors, and friends of Rotary from all over the world. May I now turn the proceedings back to President Giusello for the adjournment. Before I adjourn, and um, I'd like to ask uh, District Governor Reese if he wants to say something. Thank you very much, President Giusello. I just want to thank Pasisi uh, Governor Doug, and of course, Grace, for joining us this evening. It was indeed a uh, great pleasure to see you again, no? even virtually. Um, the last time we saw us, we saw each other was in, I think, in Toronto. So anyway, so once again, thank you very much, Doug. Congratulations, the Rotary Club of Vanilla Metro for organizing this forum. And uh, it was a very fruitful and memorable one. Thank you. Thank you, Gabri. All right. And um, as president of the Rotary Club of Manila Metro, I now call this meeting adjourned, and, but you can stay, you know, for fellowship.